So for some of the derivatives, I'll just put some problems up. We'll do some practice problems on derivatives. So if I have y equals, I'm going to start with some easy stuff, 3x to the 7th, and you need to find y prime. Then you're going to do 3 times 7, x to the 6. So 7 comes down, you reduce the exponent, and you could write that 21x to the 6. And then if I do something like this, instead of just x to the 7th, I'm going to make it something like 4x squared plus 3x minus 2. All that raised to the 7th. So I'm looking at it, and I'm, I know what to do if it's just x to the 7th, but this being this whole expression to the 7th, well, I need the chain rule. Need the chain rule. And so y equals, I'm going to put the 7, just like I put it there in that 3x to the 7, 3 times 7. Then copy 4x squared plus 3x minus 2. You reduce the exponent. And now I need the chain rule portion where I do the derivative of 4x squared plus 3x, and it's going to be 8x plus 3. I'm going to leave it like that. Now, if you look on the page that's on Moodle, I'm going to put it up on the screen for you, although it's not going to be on the uh, camera. But if you look at the first two rows right here, in fact, I didn't do this one for you, but this is the one, like I had three, well, I didn't have, uh, no, here's the problem, three x to the seven. So a was three, n was seven, three times seven, x to the six. On the side here, the chain rule version, if you have something besides plain old x, you have to do that guy's derivative on the side. So where you have that, I used a u on the paper. a u to the n, a times n, u to the n minus one, those here on the right side of this paper all have the u prime. That's the chain rule. And anytime you have something, even something that can be as simple as this, if I have y equals e to the negative x, then I'm looking at that and I'm thinking chain rule. Some textbooks show a little formula for this and it kind of drives me nuts a bit because because um, I'd rather you see this as the chain rule and the formula for this if I do if I have e to the u the derivative let's write y prime there is e to the u and then the derivative of negative x which would be negative one so this is negative e to the negative x for the derivative. So you see on the page you have a version without the chain rule because you just have an x. If you have anything with the x, you've got to do the chain rule. Okay, this brings us to some of these trig derivatives. So I will go through all of these with you. If I have y equals sine x, now in the calculus book where they introduced the derivatives of trig functions, they probably did a little proof of this one. I'm going to look to see if I can find that page real quick. It's in section 3.3, which starts on page 190, and they started with sine x
And I'm not going to go through all this formally, but f of x is sine x. They talked about the graph on the page. And here, they're using the definition of derivative, which you've probably forgotten about. So uh, they did that. They, they needed to pull in a few more things for that proof. And they kind of pulled this in in the middle of the proof, which makes it hard to read. And then they finally said, okay, here it is. The derivative of sine is cosine. So you have to know the derivative of sine is cosine. Let me zoom this out a little bit. So if I'm, I'm going to write y prime cosine x. Once they do the proof, you're free to use that result without going through the proof time after time after time. You know, unless your teacher specifically said, prove this, you're free to use this without proof because it's been proven already. Now, they came through for the derivative of cosine x. They said, uh, well, they said using the same method, if I have y equals cosine x, then y prime is negative sine x. If we had something like y equals cosine of 3x squared plus 10x, the angle is 3x squared plus 10x, then I'm going to have to do the chain rule on the side. So first I would do the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but recopy the angle just like it is. And you got to be careful here because I'm going to write times 6x plus 10, but I have to know I'm not multiplying 6x plus 10 with all of this. So I kind of like to use brackets here, and then I can say now the chain part 6x plus 10. Or if you really want to play it kind of safe, I could say negative 6x plus 10, and I could distribute that negative, and that's times the sine of 3x squared plus 10x. So, got those down. Now, these derivatives can be found on page 193 in the book, the derivatives of the trig functions. So, I'll write that here. And then here's um, the derivative of tangent x. For this one, from the proof, they actually go ahead and write sine x over cosine x, and they zap it with the quotient rule. I probably should do the quotient rule, the product rule. But if you do that and then simplify, you get the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. And then, um, I'll go back to my y notation. The derivative of cosecant x is negative co cosecant x times cotangent x. I'll just put that kind of in parentheses, but normally they just write it straight across without the parentheses. Um, if I have y equals secant x, then y prime, that derivative is secant x times tangent x. And actually the way they show this is they write secant x as 1 over cosine x, and then use the, you could use the quotient rule. Let's see, what else am I missing? I'm missing cotangent x. For y equals cotangent x, I'll say y prime is negative cosecant squared x. So those are some derivative formulas. 
that you should you should memorize. Do we need to have these memorized for the test, or do we use the ribbon sheet, or we should know? I'm gonna say you should have them memorized for the test. Um, 